We're here today at the California Center for the Arts Escondido in our museum vault that holds our permanent collection. We're talking with Philip Schultz Ritterman, who was a good friend of Mary Plasted Austin. She is one of the artists in our collection, and he's here to tell us a little bit more about her and her work. Sure. Thanks, Beth, and thanks for having me. I met Mary sometime in the late 80s. Um, she had been looking for a photographer to document her paintings, and uh, we became friends over the years. And it was sometime in 88, 87, 88, when she started this canvas, which was too large to fit into her studio. So she had a handyman um, build a scaffold um, on the outside of her art building. And she'd get up there in her 70s, uh, working some frosty mornings, I came up one day when she was up on the scaffold with, you know, all sorts of uh, heavy clothes on, but she was away, painting away. And you can tell if you look at the piece, she worked with collage and with acrylic and kept coming back to themes that she had worked on a lot, uh, biblical themes, uh, humankind, stewardship of the earth. And she was very politically active. She wrote her Congress people and her senators relentlessly. We actually had bought her a computer so she could do that more um, efficiently without having to type out papers with carbon copies. But she was pissed off at the state of affairs in the world politically, constant war, um, the environment. And so all of that flowed into this giant canvas, which was one of her last works, I believe. Um, one of her last major works. And can you talk a little bit about um, some of the series prior to this? Because um, you said she changed themes quite often. Yeah, looking back over her work, it seemed like her style and her concerns would shift every 10 or so years, but she would work prolifically uh, during those periods. The recurring themes were nature, spirituality, politics, and she had spent a lot of time in Mexico. I think she was uh, well known in that time to the circle of artists working there at the time. But I think it was almost 10 years that she spent down there. So a lot of her work was about uh, Latin American you know, spirituality and religion and, and then also violence. She was a sponge that way. I mean, she would you know, reprocess all of that into her work. Um, very colorful. The style changed from being more traditional to then being much wilder and more abstract. Did she always work large? No, there were lots of works on paper and smaller canvases. I have one that's on a copper plate that's only about this big but super detailed. So she wasn't married to a particular style or material. Did she um, work outside of 2D also? Not that I remember, no. No, it was mostly 2D. And, but on paper, on metal, on wood, on, um, on canvas, of course. And it used to be oil, and then she shifted to acrylic. But she was, uh, she was feisty and very well informed and always had an opinion. And, you know, I just loved her. She was and wonderful. Tell us a little bit about how we ended up with this piece in our collection. Yeah, so when she passed uh, sometime in, I think it was 97, um, I was surprised to find out that I'd been named her executor. And uh, there was this giant rambling estate with people she had sent money to, foster children all over the world, Pakistan, Haiti, India, Africa, South America, who she had then also bequeathed more money to, and we were trying to track them down, and it took years. But we did find every one. Um, she had left what was left of her estate, the money that was left to uh, four organizations, um, Anti-War League, uh, PETA, and Amnesty International, and I forget the fourth one. Um, and then her work, I thought I would try to place as much of it as I could with the institutions, and what remained was then auctioned off. So that's how this piece ended up here, because you are most proximate to where she used to live, and uh, the curators at the time were also interested in having it. This piece was actually shown at 
Museum of Contemporary Art at a show that happened in 93, I think, where she was suddenly the new discovery. Yeah, she was just becoming more visible again when she passed, unfortunately. <laughs>